consuming fire. Word of God, word of life. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Now Jesus Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And just then there appeared a woman with a spirit that had crippled her for 18 years. She was bent over and was quite unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, woman, You are set free from your ailment. When he laid his hand on her immediately, she stood up straight and began praising God. But the leader of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had cured on the Sabbath, kept saying to the crowd, there are six days on which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be cured, and not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord answered him and said, You hypocrites, does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the manger and lead it to give it water? And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for 18 long years, be set free from this bondage on the Sabbath day? When he said this, All his opponents were put to shame, and the entire crowd was rejoicing at all the wonderful things that he was doing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Now, as many of you know, I have a nursing background health and healing have always been a part of my story as well as my faith. So much so that prior to seminary even being on my radar, I pursued and received a certificate in faith community nursing, thinking at the time I was being called to be a parish nurse. But to my surprise, and perhaps my family's, that was not the case. It was just another step in the journey. So it's no surprise that I've always been drawn to Jesus' healing stories, and particularly this one. In fact, again, prior to seminary, through the Metropolitan Chicago Synod's Diaconia program, the two-year faith formation program for lay people, I participated in that program, and this exact text was assigned to me and I had to write a term paper on this text. So, needless to say, this text has been a big part of my journey and it's impacted me in so many ways in my thinking and my understanding. You know, it's just the way that God's word and the spirit works. And I have been waiting for this text all summer long. The story only appears in Luke's gospel. And so perhaps with a bit of hubris, I waited for this sermon. And I wrestled and I have worked over these last few days to craft words of this sermon, to share God's word with you today that might open something up for you. And so when I went to bed last night, I kept thinking about this story, how we hear Jesus' words and actions cracking open a bit of understanding for those who were present. And then it happened to me. The Spirit was at work again. 
I wrestled. I've already decided to alter today's prayer of the day. Did you notice that? The prayer of the day, was, as it is written, contains what we call ableist language, which equates the ability to stand as good and not standing as bad. That language, it's problematic because these healing stories that we hear are not about physical disabilities and being healed. They're about restoring God's wholeness and shalom for all people in the body of Christ, and specifically those communities. So I was nudged to change the prayer, even though it was already printed, and I did it. But as I laid in bed, I got nudged again. A fellow pastor and a mom of two children, the Reverend Aaron Dunlavy, who serves in Colorado, had shared her sermon for today. She was looking for feedback and support. So rather, it was late, but I read it. And dear church, the word stirred me. I was awake every hour last night. I finally gave in. I know what the Spirit does, and I got up to rewrite my sermon. And you know what? I couldn't. Then I recalled in those moments of panic, Aaron being Moses' mouthpiece. So with her permission, I'm going to share Pastor Aaron's words with you now. Grace and peace to you in the name of Jesus Christ who sets us free. Through Christ, we are set free. And being set free, we can raise up in thanks and praise to God. We can raise up our spiritual selves in thanks and praise to God. We can. We can do this even if we are no longer able. Perhaps if we've never been able to do this with our physical selves. The labels and the limitations on our physical bodies are not hindrances to our faith lives. I see the gospel lessons that focus on healing very differently now than I once did. And I believe it's worthy about talking about why this is so. Why has my understanding of today's gospel story changed over time? She writes, as the mother of two disabled children and someone who has lived with chronic mental illness, I have come to realize how much is at stake in the ways in which we talk about Jesus' acts of healing. We're called to an awareness that healing does not refer simply to the curing of a physical ailment. We always need to place Jesus' healings around in a- healing actions in context. I'm not saying that miracles don't happen now, and I'm not saying that there are not illnesses and diseases that we should seek to cure. And at the same time, I think we also need to be mindful of the fact that people who live with disabilities and diagnoses are no less loved and worthy of God's grace than others, just as they are, without being touched or transformed and brought into able-bodiedness to that state that we consider physically strong and healthy. You see, if the stories of healing in the Bible are primarily lifted as evidence of God's healing of the body rather than restoration of the spirit and their place in community, we run into the danger of seeing the healthy person as the preferential person. And this is dangerous. It's dangerous because just as in Jesus' time, some folks today still look at illness as a punishment from God. Sadly, even among those of us who know better, 
we'll fun sometimes find ourselves saying, I wonder what they did to deserve this. Am I being punished for something I did? As if cancer or paralysis or Down syndrome or autism or dementia or mental health, health issues, you name it, are somehow God putting some people through a time of trial while others are given healthy lives free from disability by virtue of doing right by God. Just this week, a woman told of how a family member that she loved and trusted heard about her cancer diagnosis and started asking personal questions about her lifestyle as if to analyze where she had gone wrong. Sadly, we too can be quick to enter that victim-blaming mentality. Yet the woman with the cancer diagnosis was gracious and offering understanding and forgiveness for realizing that most likely the person was reacting from a place of fear of their own mortality. This is such a very human response when we are confronted with disease and disability. Our own reactions come from a place where our mortality feels touched. We may feel this in ourselves when we encounter someone in a wheelchair or someone whose head is bald, perhaps because of cancer treatment. Sometimes, she writes, as a mother, I encounter it in looks that vary from sympathetic to pitying when I'm in public places with my children and their specific disabilities are apparent. We even may find ourselves saying, but for the grace of God go I, not realizing the harm of such a seemingly faith-based statement. If we are well by God's grace, does that mean that we see those who are ill, diseased, or disabled as lacking that same love and grace from God? This is truly a complex and even a confounding issue, yet she maintains that faith in loving and grace-filled God calls us to look differently at these stories of healing in the Bible that than we have ever once done. So in today's story of the woman healed on the Sabbath, here's what we hear. Jesus witnessed a woman in pain who could not stand up straight. Jesus called her to him. Jesus had the power to alleviate her pain and did so. And the woman celebrated her healing and relief from pain by giving thanks and praise to God. Yet more happens in the story, and there are other areas to consider and explore, including the proper use of the Sabbath and Sabbath law, but focusing only on the woman's healing and her response. We don't need to interpret this in such a way of making Jesus' healing preferential to able-bodiedness. Consider this. The woman had been twisted and bent down for 18 years. In that position, from a physical standpoint alone, she was able to look at, able to see only her own feet and the ground immediately in front of her. That is fundamentally an isolating position to be in. She couldn't stand up and look around to see other people around her in her community. In addition, her bent over state, she herself was below the sight line of most people in her community. She was literally beneath notice. The fact that Jesus saw her tells us a great deal about Jesus. Jesus is the one who sees the overlooked and the forgotten and those deemed lesser among us. Jesus not only sees, but he acts to call her over to him and heals her a miracle indeed, a restoration indeed, but more important than her physical restoration to standing, 
is her own spiritual restoration to be seen by and to see the community, a community that she is in and part of. See, God's healing and restoration of health and wholeness need not appear in the form of a cure for illness, but in compassion on behalf of the community. When we welcome our disabled and diseased friends, neighbors, and ourselves with compassion and love, rather than judgment and fear, we are living in God's call. And God calls us to join with all our siblings in creation and to join like that woman who was made to stand in praising God. And God is always worth praising. The thing to really see about Jesus and the way he heals people is that even when we, in our humanness, emphasize the cure, that isn't what God is putting emphasis on. The emphasis is on love, on community, and how those two things come together to point to a God who is found where love and community meet. We don't have to pray for cures for every uh, disability and disease. As we know, for many who live with disability and disease and their friends and family members, even our own selves, a cure is really besides the point because so many people just want to be loved and welcomed into community now. They want to be, a seen, be seen. They want to be remembered just as we are now. Not perfect in body or mind, but holy and loved by God. Amen.
together as the church, we join our voices as one body confessing our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us come near to the Holy One in prayer. You crown your church with steadfast love and mercy. Guide us continually in our baptismal covenant to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. Use our diverse gifts in service to the world of people of God. Merciful God. You make your ways known to all people. Inspire the rulers and leaders of nations with your compassion and mercy. Raise up activists and community organizers to restore places affected by violence, poverty, and inequity. Merciful God. You are with us and are coming in and are going out. Today we lift up our students, teachers, administrators, and support staff as they enter into a new year. May they be enfolded in your peace and trust so that no matter what challenges or joy this year holds, they can see you and your love moving in their lives. Merciful God. You provide justice for all who are oppressed and relief for all who are afflicted. Heal those who are bent over by addiction, depression, and anxiety. Set free all who cry out under the weight of mental, emotional, or physical distress, especially those we now name aloud or silently in our hearts. Merciful God, you call us to delight in the Sabbath. Renew our bodies, minds, and spirits in this worshiping assembly. Give rest to all who lead our congregation in worship, study, and service, especially Andy Maya, Linda Pilmer, Marisa McCoy, Jan Fisher, Doris Benter, Darren Anderson, our assisting ministers, worship hosts, choir, and altar team. Merciful God. Generations bless your holy name. We give you thanks for the communion of saints who have gathered in prayer and praise in this place. Support us in your love until we rest forever in you. Merciful God. Receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love. Through Jesus Christ, our holy wisdom. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. You may share a sign of God's peace. You may be seated.
please stand if you're comfortable. Let us pray. God of abundance, you have set before us a plentiful harvest. As we feast on your goodness, strengthen us to labor in your field and equip us to bear fruit for, all, for the good of all. In the name of Jesus, amen. As we gather again to hear the story in God's promises, as we prepare for Holy Communion, I invite you to locate your prepackaged communion kits that you picked up on your way into the sanctuary. If you are in need of one, please uh, raise your hand and a worship host can bring that to you. At the end of the great Thanksgiving, we will all commune together while you will remain uh, in your seats. For anyone here today who is not receiving Holy Communion at this time, a blessing may be shared, making a sign of the cross on a hand or forehead, saying God loves you today and every day, no matter what. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with the choirs of angels and with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Blessed are you, O God, creator of heaven and earth. You rescued your covenant people, led them on their journeys, and taught them by the prophets. You so loved the world that you gave your only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the life's Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit in this meal and make us one in this community of faith and with your people throughout the world. Glory and praise to you, O God author of life, word made flesh, power of the Most High, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as 
need to give those who trespass against us and we have not the temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever amen in christ's presence there is fullness of joy come to the banquet you may be seated Here at our Savior, all are welcome to the Lord's table. At this time, you may take out your communion kits, and we will commune together. Peel back the top layer of the smaller side to uncover the bread. The body of Christ given for you. Turn that over and peel back the second layer of foil to uncover the wine or grape juice. The blood of Christ shed for you. Please stand as you're comfortable. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen.
Let us pray. We give thanks, we give you thanks, generous God, for in this bread and cup we have tasted the new heaven and earth, where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witness to the resurrection, that through our lives all may know life in Jesus' name. Amen. Dear church, go forth in faith, trusting in the God who heals every infirmity. And receive God's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Build a longer table, not a higher wall. Feeding those who hunger, making room for all. Feasting together, stranger turns to friend. Christ breaks walls to pieces, false divisions end. Build a safer refuge, not a larger jail. Where the weak find shelter, mercy will not fail. For any place. <laughs> Go in peace. Love your neighbor. Thanks be to God.